White House press secretary said, even after vaccines, we will have to mask and social distance. Isn't the point of a vaccine that it changes things for the better? That's our friend Holly uh, asking the right questions, as she always does. Yeah. I mean, I have to say I'm a little bit cautious about this because I still don't think we know where we are with respect to COVID. And yes, ideally, the whole point of the vaccines is to get us out of this mess. On the other hand, we know very little about, you know, what happens downstream of these vaccines. We're going to start pushing this virus around evolutionarily by denying it access to people who've all had the same vaccine, which is going to cause it to change. And so, you know, it's not it's not binary, right? Yeah. The immunity uh, is valuable. I'm not saying that we won't have our trust abused and be told to, you know, to modify our behavior even when it's not uh, epidemiologically necessary. I think that's a risk. But it's not clear to me that given how precarious things are that, um, you know, I mean, for one thing, we haven't even done the basics here. We don't know yet if the vaccines actually block transmission. They seem to reduce symptoms in the people who've had the vaccines and hopefully also the likelihood of them getting it. But if they have it, we don't have any evidence that uh, it blocks uh, transmission. I think it would be super surprising if it didn't. Yeah. Like really, really surprising. But um, but I think there's still no clinical evidence for that. But we also, I mean, we haven't even talked about whether or not it makes sense for people who've had COVID to have the vaccine, which, you know, I no, can't. I mean, but, but this is another thing that's just being said. Well, of course you need to get the vaccine. Right. And um, I mean, I can... I can think of mechanisms that would actually make it counterindicated. And yep. certainly there is the unhedged risk and there is every possibility that having had COVID actually gives you the protection the vaccine would give you anyway. So it's really unclear to me, especially in light of the fact that we apparently have a problem with the amount of vaccine, right? right? right. There's all sorts of arguments why we might want to at least think twice yeah. with respect to people who've already been sick. Yeah, no, I'll just, uh, you yeah, know, I'll say again that the, Three groups that are easy for me to say, really be cautious, um, like really consider not, is children, no. Pregnant women, no. And if you've already had COVID, consider the risks with that information as part of your risk assessment. Yes. With, you know, the wild card of your you're triggering the immune system with a protein your immune system is already primed to react to. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, you know, just to, just to be clear about this, I'm not saying the following thing does happen, but I'm saying the following thing is plausible and therefore deserves to be eliminated as a possibility rather than just assumed not to be a, a possibility. If you get a vaccine and it causes the production of spike protein in order to inform your immune system, but your immune system is already primed to react to that spike protein. The spike proteins that you produce in order to create that reaction may gum up the cells of your immune system, which are primed to react to it, and it could make you more prone to COVID. Mm -hmm. Am I saying it happens? No. Or, but, or is it possible that it could promote an autoimmune response itself? Which is always the danger here. You're talking about a system... Uh, either of those, which are different possible outcomes, neither of which is good. Yeah. So, uh, in any case, I don't know how we ended up in this ridiculous predicament, but here we are. 